Uh, I decided to do a, uh, a tribute stream to uh, a former friend of mine, Alex Scherzer, who passed away uh, on December 4th, a little less than four weeks ago. Uh, but I just found out about it um, three days ago from a friend. And one of his best friends, if not his best friend, Stuart Rachels, former U.S. champion, who was in contact with Scherzer all the time, didn't know that he died. He doesn't. He didn't understand why he wasn't returning his his phone messages and and texts and stuff. Um, so I was the one who who told him, um, which explained why he hadn't heard from Alex in three or four weeks, uh, but not the way he he wanted it to be, of course. And he's been texting me a lot. Um, Stewart has uh, since his passing, um, and. Uh, I'll share some of what he said with you. Um, I'm not sure what the cause of death was. I've seen three or four things on the internet and none of them talk about the cause of death. So I don't know. Um, he was 51 years old. Yeah. Yeah, Ben was going to go over the games, which I thought was fine, but I did. Um, and he agreed with me. I felt like, you know, we had to talk a little bit about Scherzer's past you can't just ignore the fact that he was arrested. yeah no when scherzer was 33 34 i'm close <clears throat> i'm like a year off at most he was arrested for attempting to have sex with a 15 year old girl across state lines so what that meant was and i remember this from when it happened and i actually have something maybe karen doesn't even know but um and that's a federal crime it's not a state crime because some states, it's 15, some it's 16, some it's 17, some it's 18. depends what state you're in. The, the U.S. has a lot of states. So for a state crime to be committed, they would have to be in the same state. And they were contacting each other over the Internet. And he drove from one state, was driving to the state that she lived in with the intention of having sex, which is a federal crime if... That person is under, I think, 18, but it might be 17. But either way, it's it's illegal. And what ended up happening was, and I remember this from when it happened. Karen doesn't know a lot of it, but I know a lot of it. I don't um, know most of it. Right. What's that? I don't know most of right. it. Right. What happened was okay. he was talking to her on the Internet, and it was relatively innocent. And she was in jail at the time. She was in youth jail, like whatever that's called. Um, juvenile called and she had committed crimes in the past and her mom found printouts of her um, talking on the internet with with Alex that she had printed them out and had them in her bag and her mom saw them and her mom told the police and said this 30 some year old is talking to my daughter on the internet my daughter's 15 and I don't like that and at that point, the <laughs> FBI took over her account and started talking to Alex, pretending they were her. And up until that point, there was no sexual discussion. And in fact, before that, she was complaining about a guy who was hassling her and Alex told her to go to the police. But then when FBI came along, the FBI said as her, hey, you should come down here and we can have sex. And then eventually he did do that. And when he got there, the FBI arrested him. There was a court case in Alabama. I assume it was federal court. And the, the, the jury ruled 12-0 that he was innocent, even though it's like a conservative Southern, you know, that's not the kind of thing they like in Alabama, is, you know, Northerners coming down to sleep with their daughters. And um, they ruled 12-0 in Alex's favor, not guilty, because... 100% of anything that was illegal was the FBI. They had transcripts of when she was talking to him and it was sort of banal. But they decided they would entrap him and it wasn't it wasn't even like 11-1 or 10-2, it was 12-0 that they had entrapped him. And one thing Karen might not know is the night before the verdict, I called Alex and I had no, I, I didn't have his phone number, but I guess Stewart, I guess, I don't know who it was, told me what hotel he was staying in. I called the hotel and asked for his room, and he answered. <clears throat> and I said, what do you think? And he said, I'm prepared to go to jail. I might, I might have to go to jail. And then that, if that happens, that's what happens. And that was the night before the verdict. 
He said, I hope I don't, but I'm, I'm ready if that's what happens. That's, you know, that's, right. what, that's what you get is you go to jail. And then he was found not guilty, didn't go to jail. Unfortunately, his profession, which was a doctor, it's not good to be on trial for trying to have sex with a minor. That's bad. So every time he would go to like a new place to get a job, eventually somebody would find out, hey, look at this court case, and the administration would fire him because they didn't want him on the staff. This happened to him three or four times. Eventually he started his own practice and he didn't fire himself, although he thought about it. But, okay, and I'm glad to get all these details, but you know, he did, did want to go and have sex with the 15-year-old and did go down... Mm -hmm. That's went. correct. He's a creeper. Was a creeper. Marriott today subscribed. He's not a creeper, <laughs> although he is Italian, so I don't know. You know, that yeah. creeper. But now he also had some <laughs> affliction, which I didn't know about. But God damn, do I believe it? I'm going to tell you what it is. Um. Yay! Thank you, Welch's grape juice and Marriott today. How's it going? I gotta tell you what he had because Stuart told me. <clears throat> um, also, he thought when he was in the Philippines that he would be murdered by Duarte's people. Hmm, interesting. Uh, laughing fit. Yeah, he didn't actually commit the crime, but um, yeah, well, you know, is a bare minimum a creeper. <laughs> but we're gonna look at his games anyway. You know, I'd. I'm Here it fine is. with looking at the games. He had McArdle's disease. Yeah, what is that? I don't know. I looked it up, and it says it's some muscle thing. Oh, oh yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah and he he had an unusual way of presenting himself and speaking. He would he would say ah, a lot, and he would it was weird. But you know, I just thought, okay, people are weird. <clears throat> but he he had something, and and Stewart said he had McArdle's disease, and I was like, okay, that. That sounds like what he had. Mm -hmm. um, and there was testimony, including by Judith Polgar, saying he was a great guy, even though he learned Hungarian and moved to Hungary as a kid to try to get with Sophia. So More and they were the same age, but still weird. More creepiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you don't think that's sweet? <laughs> a little bit stalkerish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then the FBI is also very creepy. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the jury ruled that the FBI did it all, that she never said anything to him and vice versa. So a true gentleman. That's right. I learned Hungarian. No, the mom thought it was weird. She talked to me about it once. Isn't it weird for him to learn Hungarian and move to Hungary? And I said, yeah, he's okay. Uh, imagine someone learns English just for Ben. That's what Karen did. Because <laughs> Karen used to speak with a really thick accent. And she got rid of it just to be with me. <laughs> yeah. Etc. Anyway, it doesn't really excuse his behavior, but from the evidence, he he didn't do anything illegal. As far as it turned out, it started with them, but it could have it could have led to that if the FBI hadn't have gotten involved. Nobody knows what would have happened. They 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 could have been married now for all we know. But yeah. but yeah, very suspicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and usually in that kind of a case, usually, when somebody's arrested for a, a crime of that manner, they're like, hey, we just found out that this is the fifth time you've done that, and these other four women are going to testify against you now, or they, they won't, but maybe they will. But nothing had ever happened with him, which I guess was good for, the, for him for court, was they didn't have anything else that he did with anybody. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't like continuing going from mm -hmm. woman to woman like you see on the TV shows. He wasn't a serial creeper that we know mm -hmm. of. What happened? This all happened 20, 25 years ago. I don't know. Let's anyway. see, how 51. So it was like 18 years ago this happened. Well, let's walk in his gay. Let's look yeah. at the creepers. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Alex as a kid would get into laughing fits, which I could usually get him into. And he would always make these grand pronouncements like, I've refuted this opening and this opening wins, and we would all laugh at him. We were on the floor laughing. He would always, when he was like 16, he's like, this opening wins by force, the English, and we just start laughing. It was just funny. That's so. funny, Sergeant Major mm -hmm. Dilemma. Mm -hmm. 
I must confess I missed who this person is. Are we talking about Bill Clinton? We're talking about Alex Scherzer. That's the title of the stream. He died on December 4th at the age of 51. Mm -hmm. You can't hear anything? I mean, turn your sound up. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I would do. Oh, he says, sorry, anytime I ask a question, a commercial breaks out. Yeah, you have you have to Get become a, you have to become a subscriber to the stream like any normal person would do. Yeah, because I it, I admit it's pretty oppressive. The FBI is going to go to your house for stealing watching this stream instead of paying for it. Those ads, yeah, it's sort of laughable. I get it. Get a sub. We're saying I can't I can't tell him to get a sub because he can't hear because of the commercials. It's a catch twenty two. I tells you, <laughs> he's like I can't hear it. I'm telling him how to hear it and he can't hear it. So I, you know. I mean, you know, we got to pay some bills here. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm back. I can hear. Become a sub and you'll never see ads again. You know, with, even though you can't Aww. afford. Oh, thanks, Thank Thaddeus. Thank you, Thaddeus. Okay. Now, yeah, what Karen so doesn't know, because she barely. She, in fact, I would guess if Karen never met me, I'm guessing that she never heard of Alex Scherzer. That's correct. Yeah. Now, Alex Scherzer beat a lot of really strong GMs considering Karen never heard of him, including... Vishiana, he played Anand several times, and there was a lot of games he didn't lose. I couldn't find a game he lost to Anand. I found games he won and drew. But Scherzer, Scherzer had the opposite takes in, when he was white and black. When he was white, he checkmated you. He played for checkmate on move one, and then by move 20, you were checkmated. With black, he was the first grandmaster that seriously studied the Berlin. And... The first grandmaster to play the Berlin every game was Arthur Bisgeier. If you look at Bisgeier's games from the 50s and 60s, they're all Berlins. They're all Berlin end games, and Bisgeier did well. Then after Bisgeier was Scherzer, except Scherzer wasn't kidding around. Scherzer would study the Berlin for hours every day to play black in a Berlin and trade queens and try to win those end games. Now, when Bisgeier played the Berlin, he was trying to draw. When Scherzer played the Berlin, he was trying to win. And then the Berlin became very popular and famous after Kramnik used it successfully to win his match against Kasparov. But that was way after Bisgeier and a little bit after Scherzer. But since those grandmasters are not top 10, top 20 in the world, although maybe, maybe, I said maybe, maybe at his absolute peak, Bisgeier was 20th in the world. Maybe, maybe. Not, he wasn't, but maybe. Okay, Scherzer was, you know, top 20 in the U.S. <clears throat> but Kramnik made it famous by drawing Kasparov every game with it. And now people are still playing the Berlin because of the Kasparov-Kramnik match. If I said Kasparov made it famous, I meant to say Kramnik. <clears throat> and so forth. Right, if you sub to a Twitch channel, you don't see commercials. So somehow we have to pay the bills. If you sub, that helps me pay the bills. If you don't sub, then you watch commercials, which helps me pay the bills. But subbing is better because we want to grow a community. Also, then your money goes in my pocket. And then Jeff Bezos gets a little bit richer. Just a little. But all you guys, it adds up. A little bit richer. Yeah. <clears throat> I've won, drawn, and lost against Scherzer. I've done it all. I'm, I'm the everyman. Okay, now, w w when I told Stuart Rachels I was going to do a, you know, a thing with Scherzer, he suggested two games, this game and another game, which I'll, I'll tell you when I get to it. Um, and I had a game in mind I wanted to show, and I found it. So, and then there were I found some other games also, including one of mine. Okay, now Kudrin, when he plays the black pieces... Plays like Scherzer does with the white pieces. Kudrin plays like a lunatic. He played the Benoni, then he played the Grinfeld, and he always played the Dragon. Okay, And Kudrin's older than me, if you can believe that. Somebody's older than me. So Kudrin, in the 1980s and 90s, was playing in the U.S. Championship almost every year. And not doing very well, because he was about the 15th best player in the U.S., and so he would finish like 11th or 10th out of, you know, 16, 14, you know. So he wasn't winning the U.S. championship, but he was getting invited. And he was a strong grandmaster. He's played on an Olympic team and such. And he always played the dragon. 
and Scherzer always checkmated the dragon. So when Scherzer was white, you could go to your local bookie and bet the game was going to be a dragon. Okay, and you'd have to give big odds. But if you bet $1,000, you would win zero. That's, that's how likely it was, that's stealing from Futurama. Okay. So it was a dragon, obviously. Scherzer's white. And this is the dragon. Now, Scherzer always played the Yugoslav attack, castle queenside, and checkmated his opponent. We're going to show more than one example of that in this stream. And Scherzer didn't play boring with white. With black, he might have some boring Berlins. At some point in Scherzer's life, I think it started in 1992 when he got the Sanford Fellowship, is he was told by one of his coaches, never offer a draw and never accept a draw. And he started doing that. Before that, he had some draws. But when he was older and he was trying to get better, there was no draws. So he was winning and losing a lot. And he lost a lot of games as a consequence. Very few draws between like 1993 and his death. Also, no draws the last 10 years of his life because he didn't play in tournaments. He was also a medical doctor. And there's three people on earth who I know are grandmasters and medical doctors. There could be more, but there's three that I know. Scherzer, RIP. And then the guy who just got married two years ago in, in Egypt. Um, what's his name? The Egyptian Grandmaster who's 2700. Somebody hook me up. <clears throat> Thank mean, you, Basem Amin. Thank you. And you mean medical doctor. Right, medical doctor, not like Reuben Fine, fake doctor. Not like, you know, Jill Biden. Okay, so Basem Amin, 2700 and a medical doctor and just got married. God damn. Okay, and then the third one is currently married, as, as far as I know, maybe they're not married, to Sophia Polgar. Now, what are the chances? Listen to this, com com listen. Listen to this complicated thing I'm going to tell you. Yeah. You're 14, 15 years old. An American mm -hmm. doofus decides he's in love with you and learns Hungarian, moves to Hungary, and then he becomes a doctor and a grandmaster, and you marry another doctor and a grandmaster, and there aren't any in the world. So she's a, she attracts men who are doctors and grandmasters. That to be both. That's who's attracted to Sophia Polgar. Okay, and his name, now don't get confused, is Yona Koshishvili. And you're going to be confused because you're going to think of Koshishvili, whose first name is Georgi. And they spell their last <laughs> names differently. Koshishvili isn't spelled the same as Koshishvili. Yona Koshishvili is an Israeli grandmaster and a medical doctor you may have noticed you've never heard of him because he doesn't play in tournaments anymore because he does doctor stuff. Sort of like what Scherzer did. But Sam Amin does both. He plays chess and he's a doctor. He has a practice and he plays chess. The other ones stop playing chess. And they're like, man, doctor money is better than chess money. Yona Koshishvili was probably like 25, 90 feet A. And Scherzer was probably 25, 60 feet at his peak. So forth. That's right, Ace Deuce with the Simpsons reference. Very good. Now, there could be other people on Earth who are medical doctors and grandmasters. I just don't know who they are. There could be. Those are the three that I knew. Those three. Okay. So Scherzer plays aggressive. Never play F3. Queen D2. And he, he never played castles. He always played Bishop C4. Bishop C4 in the 70s and 80s was the main move. And then probably Castle's queenside overtook it like later. And they played one of the main lines, H4, H5, then Castle's. Okay, now I don't play the dragon with white or black. And I know this position because it's such a common position, this one. Um, and... In 1985, when this game was played, this was the latest theory. Of course, there's more theory now that either goes beyond this or they play something else. I think a lot of times white plays king b1 earlier. A lot of players don't play bishop c4 anymore. A lot of players with black don't play this line anymore. So, okay. So g4. And, and 
Alex was willing to sacrifice at all times and play the most aggressive move, although here he's just in his preparation. This is just theory. And then f4. If Now, if you play f4 right away in this position, then you're giving the g4 square away. My knight has g4, my knight has c4, and so forth. So by playing g4 first, you take away the g4 square for the knight, and you make this pawn move so you can play h5 later. Okay, and knight c4 is forced, takes, takes, e5. And I'm sure this is still <clears throat> um, preparation from Alex. And probably Kudrin. Kudrin only played the dragon. So I'm not sure like who got out of prep first. I don't know. Okay, now the engine, today's engine, Stockfish 15 on chess.com, that's the engine they have. They, they like black a lot here. It says black's better with knight h5 or knight h7. Okay, he played knight h7. It likes, likes black. Queen d3. And now, uh, Kudrin followed my rule, um, but he, 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 he did the wrong one. He had too many exchange sacrifices, so he played the wrong one. We're going to ask Karen what she thinks. Do you think black should sack this exchange on d4 or on c3? I got two exchange sacks, one for each of you. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can guess. I Always don't guess. I don't want to just guess. No. Yeah, if I don't know. Okay, so I think the reason he played the wrong one, I think the right one is because this knight is better than this knight. This knight can go to d5 and e4, and especially d5, because you can see knight e7. Mm -hmm. This knight can't go anywhere. Okay. So I think he should take this. I see. Okay. And also, when you sack here and the queen takes, the queen's defending e5. But here, after takes, takes, e5 is not as defended. So the engine prefers black after rook takes c3. He took on d4. Hey, can you skid over like one fourth inch? Well, now you're up. Don't get off the screen. It's just it was making a noise. Is that it? was, I think, this sitting four. No. Okay. Now queen takes d4. Now, here, the arbiter stopped the game because it was too exciting. You know who the arbiter was? No. Zoidberg. Oh. No. Stop, it's too exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, he played bishop c6, attacking the rook on h1. Knight d5, threatening e7. God damn threatening e7. Never play f6. Now, you guys laugh when I say, play, when I say never play f6. Then you play f6. Then you lose. Then you laugh more. Smart. Good, good job. Okay, the engine says boo to f6. You, you never want to move pawns in front of your king. That's a fatal weakness of the king. And the engine says after f6, everything wins for white. Because black's king is too exposed. White's king's pretty safe. He played queen c4. That's the engine move. Threatening double, triple, quadruple check. King h8, also a bad move. h5. See how he's coming to get him? Mm -hmm. Now he's threatening hg. Okay. And... If we want to see this game live and you want to see HG, then we need to go into a time machine. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. Yay. I've heard it about a you know, hundred times. I but not, not in that way. But I finally got it. Mm -hmm. I never got it until oh, okay. today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the way, H, queen c4 was the engine move, and h5 is the engine move. Yeah. Now, if Hans played those moves, they would say he's cheating because this is a super complicated position. But in 1985, if you played the engine move, that means your move was no good. 85 engine's no good. 85 engine's like 2250, and that's like a mainframe. <clears throat> you couldn't put it in your pocket. They didn't have the engines on the phones then. Terrible. What a terrible time to be alive. Okay, so he took, rook takes, god damn. He's getting them six ways from Sunday. Bishop e8 attacking the rook. 
Now, what, what should white do based on my teachings? <clears throat> I would just take the knight with the rook. Always sack the exchange. Yeah. Yeah. He's got this other rook. Okay. Now, you can do the song about the sweet loving woman, and you can do the song about the knife. But there's only one thing you can do here. You do the walk of life. Yeah, you do the walk of life. Da 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 da. Dire straits. Yeah. Okay, so if you play King G8, Knight E7, and or Knight F6 mate, mm -hmm. and then Bishop H6 is no good, but it actually lasts longer than King G6. That's no good. So he plays King G6, and once again he plays the mate move F5. If you take the bishop, White has mate in one. Let's see if Karen can find it. Uh, queen f4. Queen f4. And black has the two bishops, but white has the fuck else. So he had to take with the king. Okay, then knight e3 check. Okay, now, if you take with the bishop, then that's mate. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do that. He played king g6. Queen takes g4. These are all the engine moves. Every move white makes is the engine move. Like, every move. So you don't want to play the dragon against Scherzer because, you know, <clears throat> terrible. Okay. Is he, the dragon played much anymore? Not too much. King F7, that's the engine move. E6, and then Bishop H6. God damn. I said God damn. And then he resigned here. Notice... Black got no attack against White's king, and we were always just staring over here. Mm -hmm. When I castle opposite sides in any opening, middle game, that's what I'm looking for. Everybody's looking at what I'm doing and not what they're doing. That's what I'm trying to do. Now, you have to realize, Kudrin only played the dragon. This was the only opening he played. So he should play Black pretty well. How embarrassing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Right, this is his bread and butter, right. but it wasn't vegan. You know, you, you got in trouble there. Man, Scherzer played great that game. I wonder if I can do a thing, you know, like analyze somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess not. It can't be done. Let's see, what does this say? Uh, manage. It says that I'm banned from chess.com. What? 